and thank you so much for joining us. Spring is almost here. I don't know about you, but we are most certainly counting the days around here. Mike and I and our entire team have quite a show for you uh, this week, and we don't have a lot of time to chat back and forth. So uh, first things first, one of our favorite area boxers, he had a birthday just a couple days ago. So happy birthday, Mr. Ray Mancini. But uh, Mike, you caught up with another Valley boxer, and I cannot wait to see what is new for Kelly Pavlik. Good afternoon, Lauren, and good afternoon to the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. Welcome to Valley Spotlight, and uh, we're going to have a fun afternoon today. Thank you for that, and uh, we have a cool, some cool stories for you. First of all, we're going to check in on Pesto's Test Kitchen and see how we cook salmon. We'll have that for you in a bit. I visited a mother-daughter duo that has a soap shop and other natural um, amenities there in Hermitage, Pennsylvania. So that was a lot of fun and uh, met up with some folks that are doing a wellness retreat here at the Grand Resort. So we'll tell you more about that as we go along as well. So first story though, right out of the gates, there aren't too many people out there that can literally say they've gotten up on the canvas, off the canvas and fought back. Kelly Pavlik's one of those people. The ghost, still the champ, you can call him that, but he has a new endeavor and a new thing he's doing. So we thought we'd catch up with Kelly Pavlik. I'm competitive. I, I, I've i always uh, driven myself. If I put my mind to it, if it's something that I actually like, really like, I'll go after it, you know, hard. That was Kelly Pavlik back then when he won the title, and he's the exact same person now, except his powerlifting physique makes him look a little different these days. You know, I, I was, I fought at 160 pounds. So, you know, if I turn sideways and stuck my tongue out, I look like a zipper and uh, it, got, it got old, you know, it was, it's not that I was um, getting big so I could be tough. You know, I'm almost 40 years old. I don't care about the days either, you know, just a, a challenge that I wanted to try to do uh -huh. um, an accomplish, accomplishment. He accomplished that goal, even won a world championship in the Submasters. And now he focuses on another goal, his gym. It's called My Gym and it's here in Columbiana. I took over and there was a lot, a lot that we had to do to it. Um, you know, I've kind of like redesigned it. Um, Move things around, brought brand new equipment in, you know, and kept some of the old equipment too, though. So, you know, you got uh, people who just want to lose weight, you got people who want to get big and, and strong. The great thing about this gym is we got meatheads and we got bodybuilders and we got a 72 year old woman who's making jokes with the young guys. You know, everybody gets along. A lot of gyms kind of cater to like one specific type of uh, workouts. You may have a uh, stretch and fitness gym, you may have a meathead gym, but our this gym, everybody just comes and does their own thing. Kelly has all age groups, including this 11-year-old girl named Zion. And she's fighting, she's getting ready for the Nationals. And so training fighters is, is a big one that I want to do. Um, and he's working with his son, also named Kelly, which can be a challenge. It's hard. And you see this day and age, um, you know, when we were coming up, it was always kind of easier. Uh, you listen to your dad, um, you know, it's harder with the kids. I personally, with my son, I don't, I don't um, bother him too much on it, you know. I don't force him in. I kind of let him choose, pick and choose what they want to do. So Kelly Pavlik is still very busy, being a husband and a dad to his son and daughter and training people. But everything's always evolving. We're always trying to keep up, and that's what I like about it. Uh, I research, I go through everything, and I find new things that work, and it's fun. His next adventure will be the Kelly Pavlik Charitable Organization and opening a boxing gym in the area. And to be clear, he wants to work with others, not start training to fight again himself. So, you know, I'm still around the sport. I cover the fights and then I go to the big fights. And uh, I think that does enough for me as far as, you know, wanting to get back. So you won't box again? No. But uh, do I miss boxing to a certain extent? You know, yeah, I do. Um, do I miss the work that goes into it to eight hours a day? You know, a lot of people always say like, oh, you should, we wish you'd go back and fight one more time. And that'd be like telling a construction worker after eight years of retiring, hey, why don't you go back up on that roof and shoot a nil through your knuckle one, one last time, you know, and out uh, there. But I don't think it's so much that. I think it's the, the moment where you got 16,000 people at that time or 12 
and they're all cheering and you you make you do an accomplishment that it's a little different it's not a drum i think and yeah you know sometimes you do miss that i think that's the biggest thing you know that the, in the moment type situation is the part that you could miss so some people are different some some will like to go on forever um i was content i was happy when i retired you know um so yeah, I, I miss it, and I'm still involved in it. So I think that kind of takes yeah. care of the itch or, or the want to go back to it. So great to catch up with him. It's been a long time. Thank you. If you want to check out my gym, it's right there in the heart of Columbia, Ohio, and uh, he'll he'll get you in shape. That's for sure. All right, the weather's starting to break, and we're going to have warm temperatures this week. Let's talk about some outside activities with Lauren. Always good to see him, and always good to see you both smiling, Michael. Thank you so much for that one. Well, anybody that's watched us on WFMJ Today or on this show, you know that we like to play golf. And we also like to get away. And I had the fortunate opportunity to check out an Airbnb right in Lowville, Ohio, that is perfect for golf fans and people that just want to get together with friends and family. <laughs> No, this is not a special edition of Home Advantage with Ray Carlson. Don't worry, Kel, you're still our lady. Uh, but we did want to show off a very special property right here in downtown Lowville. This is Ray Carlson. Ray, nice to have you back on the show. Well, thank you. We, were we won't be talking drugs today, Wait, we're not we'll talking, be talking buildings. We're not talking about <laughs> compounding anything today, yeah. but maybe a, a compounding effect of what you've had on, on Lowville. And the structure hmm. that we're in right now was built in what, like 1905? Early 1900s, yes. The reason why we're here is because not only is that an astounding number, but Ray has put heart and soul and effort into turning this into a place that um, you can come and stay and bring your family and have a great time. It's listed on Airbnb, mm -hmm. and this, this kitchen is just the beginning, right? This is, there's so yeah. much here. Yeah, it's kind of a cool layout. The Airbnb is on the second floor. Uh, that is kind of rented separate from the first floor that has a uh, pool table, golf simulator, um, little wine room what? sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. You put lots of money and lots of effort into this. Nine Why months Why do off. it? Why do it in the first place? Um, I see a lot of value in the old buildings. I believe that um, they're going to be needed again one day for, you know, by, our, by our children. But I had done the house right next door. And the more I looked over at this building here, the more I fell in love with it. And one thing led to the next and told my wife, I said, you know, I'd really like to buy that building. And so she kind of gave the okay. And, and here, we, here are. we are. Yeah, here we yeah. are. I just finished it just at the time that the virus had hit. So just when I was ready to open it up, kind of closed it and, but it's back open. It's back open now, yeah. and it's available on Airbnb. So mm -hmm. um, you, of course, you know, try to make sure that you keep, you know, your investment safe and mm -hmm. all of that. But it's very, very inexpensive to have a night here, right? Yes, uh, for the upstairs, it's uh, $110. Now, if you want to use the downstairs, you won't see that part of it on Airbnb because okay. I'm kind of restricting that. The golf simulator is, it's a top of the line, track man for and you just so i have to control the usage of that but when you hook up on airbnb and message me you know that's uh, that's a we, good place we can to kind of go from there as far as using the downstairs also but lowville is a very comfortable place to be the, the tracks are 50 feet in front of the building yeah. here away the trains going by uh at night are not disturbing this building is really well insulated, yeah. new windows and everything. So it's real, it's real cozy. And uh, for it's people, a nice cozy stay. Right, and for people who just come, maybe come to Lowville just for like the Lowville Fest or the baby mm -hmm. doll dance, this is a reason to like, you know, make a plan, stay close to home and have a really nice time. Yeah. We have a, a lot of wonderful things going on in Lowville with um, the dam being removed at the river there and hopefully some kayakers, a, a, a dock for the kayakers and uh, Carchetti's restaurant is yeah. just across the tracks. Malillo's almost next door. Mm -hmm. So a lot of good things happening in Lowville of late and uh, me and my family were happy to be part of this resurgence. Exactly. Which I think exactly. is a really Saving good. Saving some of these old buildings. There's a lot of stories to be told by them and uh, you can't just let them degrade and be bulldozed over and replaced with 
the newness today that kids need to have, you know, a basis from which to remember where it is that we came from in, in a lot of respects. And the masons alone, that these, these walls are 12 inches thick of, of brick, the effort. Um, and they're still beautiful buildings, they're solid, they just need love. You gotta rip out what's old and ugly and just, unfortunately for this building here, almost everything uh, was removed and replaced, but well, the you, essence of it—you can still is, feel it—is is here. You yes. can. Yes. For people mm -hmm. that want to look it up on Airbnb, what is the name that they should be uh, typing in? It's Carlson's Swing Shop. But if you just go to Airbnb and the location, it'll ask you where do you want to stay, or just type in Lowville. Lowville, Ohio. Yeah, and I think we're the there. first one that, that <laughs> comes up. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh -huh. Thank you for having yeah. us out well, here. Well, thank you. I appreciate and, you coming. Uh, thanks for great. seeing such you know, strengthen the past and giving oh, it that you. love and effort it deserved, okay? Appreciate that. We'll give you an elbow. Okay. Dolly Spotlight elbow. For over 80 years, Cafe 422 has been the Valley's premier destination for steaks, seafood, and fine Italian cuisine. Join us every Wednesday for our prime rib, only $15.99. Cafe 422 in Warren and Boardman. Getting ready for another fun Sunday afternoon watching sports and having fun. Uh, you know when you cook salmon and you're just not sure, how long do I cook it? Do I take the skin off? How do I do it? What makes it good? Well, in Pesto's Test Kitchen, we answer all those questions. Test Kitchen on the road this week. We are downtown in Youngstown at Bistro 1907. Mark Canzanetta and his good friend. Sally the Salmon. Sa <laughs> Sally the Salmon, who I feel a little bit bad about today, but we're we doing do some feel bad. culinary tips today. I think it is a great time to start introducing some culinary tips. You know, share some of the knowledge I have mm -hmm. in my head and pass it on to those amateur cooks at home, some professional cooks at home. I'll, I'll be honest, Enthusiasts. I, know, I know nothing about this other than there's a giant, I don't even know what kind of fish this is. Well, this is a salmon that comes off the northernmost tip of Scotland, okay. Faroe Island. So this is a wild caught salmon. What you means? know, that means, you know, it's actually caught in the wild. This was caught, you know, this was caught in nets, okay. you know, some are, are hook caught, some are farmed raised, you know, and you know, with fish, I like to go with either line caught or wild caught because the flavor's better, the fish is in its natural environment, swimming, going through the, the areas that it goes through, um, eating the fish and other things that are in that mm -hmm. area of the country or world that right it's in, here. so it has the minerality of the area, it has the flavor of that area, whereas, you know, when you have a wild, I mean, farm raised, you know, they're, they're grown in ponds or they're grown in areas in the ocean where they just, they sprinkle food over them and sometimes the food is color, which gives the fish the color. Okay. You know, and plus they're grown it exponentially, you know, and we don't want that. We want them to be natural. How does it get from the northern tip of Scotland to downtown Youngstown? Well, you know, it, it, it's a very quick practice. It's a very, you know, complicated practice. You know, you have to catch the fish. You have to bring it onto the boat, ice it very well. You know, you have to ice down that fish. You want to make sure it doesn't start to decay whatsoever, so a lot of steps are needed to maintain that freshness and the quality of the fish. It's then brought to the docks, packed in containers, and then air shipped across across the ocean to the United States or quick, wherever it's going right? very, very they quickly. Quick. Are you happy with this one? How big is I this am. thing? This is about an eight, eight and a half to ten pound uh, salmon from Faroe Island, and I'm very, very happy with it. It came in from one of our vendors just yesterday morning, mm -hmm. so they probably received it Sunday, uh, which is fantastic turnaround time, you know? Okay. But there's some things we need to check when we're going to Once pick you get out the fresh fish, fish. This is what you would do, and if I went to the store to get a fresh fish, these are things I should look for. Exactly. Okay. Especially if you're buying a whole fish for a celebration or a party. Um, um, typically when you go to your local grocer, you don't see whole fish of this size. Right. You just usually see a filet or a steak. 
So what we want to do is, you know, a couple things. We want to really hone in on the appearance of the fish. All right. The fish should look like it just came out of the water. Okay, so you know? we're starting on the head part, We're right? starting on the head. So the first thing you want to do is check the clarity of the eyes. You want to make sure the eyes are clear, not cloudy. Mm -hmm firm and not sunken in. If they're sunken in and hollowed out, that means the fish has been sitting around, starting to dehydrate, starting to decay. You like that? I can touch the eye. You can touch the eye. But if it doesn't go in, if it doesn't sink in, yeah, that's a good yeah, sign. Yeah, I think we're a good sign. The next thing you want to do is check the gills. You want to make sure because that's how the, the fish lives. You know, they swim, they aerate through their gills. That's how they get oxygenized. Uh -huh. So you want to make sure they're clean smelling, smelling fresh like the ocean. Are we, are we in good it's shape? clean smell. I mean, I don't smell the fish. And you shouldn't, you know. Okay. You really shouldn't smell fish. You All should right. smell the ocean when you're picking out fish or the lake that it came from. Very clean, very pleasant aroma, okay? Is this how they come super smooth like this? Well, this or? one was scaled for so us. So they take the scales which off. Which I'm very happy for because fish gills go all over your kitchen. Okay. You know, it's kind of okay. like when you refinish your hardwood floors, that There's dust, dust never goes away. Okay. Fish scales never go away. Okay. So the next thing you want to do, it's very important, go ahead and touch that fish. Okay. Do you see when Mike is touching the fish, it immediately springs? Back. Bumps back up. So that means Does that, that mean it's, it's fresh, it, it was well maintained, okay. it's, the flesh isn't damaged right. underneath, so yeah, it, it's, it comes pops right back. So that's a good sign. So if it stayed indented, that means that it's been decaying, it's sat around for a while. You're also going to notice the smell right away if it does that. So okay. you want to kind of stay away from those fish. How long from when I bring this home from the store mm -hmm. to when I got to cook it and when I got to eat it? Or is there a, a process well, where I Well, first off, you want to make sure bit? it's gutted. Just like if you're hunting and you're in the nature okay. and you're, you know, you're a sportsman and you happen to take down a deer, you want to gut it immediately. Okay. Because that starts the really the DK process quickly. So you want to make sure it's gutted. Sometimes you want to pack that body cavity with ice. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to store it in ice on a drain pan so it drips down through so it's not sitting in water that can get murky. Got so it. from that time, then you cut the fillets off. Three to four days after that, as long as it's well maintained in a refrigerated area, you're going to have good fish for about three or four days. Are we going to cut the fillets? We are going to cut the fillets so off gonna, this. So we're going to show you how to do that after this break, and I'm guessing it's this part of the fish, not the lower part. We are going to cut from the, the gills all the way back along the backbone. Okay, you won't want to miss this. Wake the kids, everyone. <laughs> Be right back. A to Z Dependable Services now offers walk-in tubs and showers in as little as one day. Let us create a safer bathing experience in your bathroom or the shower of your dreams. Call A to Z Dependable Services today for a free estimate or visit us online at onlyatoz.com. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. I'm constantly asked by news sources how to best navigate today's real estate market. I call the brightest agents in the business to get their input. Hi Kelly, what's going on in the Mahoney Valley area? Hi Barbara, the market in the Mahoney Valley has remained strong. I'm so happy to hear that. Sellers are enjoying the safety of the Guaranteed Sold program and buyers and sellers love the 3D tour and the free moving truck. Get the best advice from my friend Kelly Warren. Go to kellysoldit.com. Be safe and smart. Deals is the low cost living anti-inflation department store. Shop Hills in the Liberty, Lincoln Knowles, and Bourbon Plaza, Youngstown, and the Ridgeview Plaza in Warren, and the Hills location in Champion, all open 10 till 10 daily. All right, we are back, and now uh, Sally the Salmon is going to get the business end of this knife. Yes, yes. So show and, me you know, what to do. And, you know, having a great knife is one of the most important things about doing anything in the kitchen, because even if you would happen to get cut, you're getting cut with a nice, clean edge mm -hmm. versus a jagged edge from a dull knife. Oh. Heals quicker. The doctor can take care of it quicker. Or you can use what I do. I'm a super glue guy. I just super glue, glue up the together cut and go back to work. <laughs> okay, so All we're going right, to have ready? a great, sharp knife. We're going to pull back that. We're going to come in right behind that. We're gonna go right behind the head on the gills, uh -huh. and we're gonna turn the knife about 90 degrees. And we're gonna follow the natural course of the backbone all the way down the fillet. Are there bones in there? Oh, there, you're hearing me cut through them. Yes, I am, actually. Let me get close. Okay, and we're gonna go right down through uh -huh. until it's done. And then, Mike, we're gonna pull this off, and we have that wonderfully oh, wow. filleted fish right here. And that's the one side of the filet. We're going to clean that up a little bit, take care of some of those bones. But as you can see, we didn't leave much here. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to use, totally utilize this, you can scrape away some of this flesh, and you could use that as a salmon taco, salmon sashimi, okay. or anything you wanted to do with that, because that's all great usable flesh, and it's delicious. It's fresh, it's clean, it's beautiful. As you can see, this is a really great healthy fish. And just, I can't wait to serve it to our guests. How about that? So salmon, always on the menu here. Always on the menu. 
And it's uh, especially a Lent in thing. A lot oh, of people especially go for during that. Lent. Yeah, we have a lot of fish during Lent. We offer a lot of fish to begin with. We love fish down here at Bistro 1907. And uh, this is the fish we serve every day. Faroe Sounds Island good. salmon from Scotland. Thanks for the culinary tip. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by a fresh fish. You can do it. Right, Mark? Absolutely. You can do it. Check them out. Bistro 1907 right here in downtown Youngstown. All right, thank you, Mark. Make sure you check out Bistro 1907 in downtown Youngstown. Open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and for Sunday brunch as well. Be back with more Valley Spotlight after this. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. View the best cafe, home of Uncle Nick's Greek Fried Chicken. Sunrise Inn, home of award-winning pizza. Weston, Maine. Come check out our poutine. Mocha House Cafe and Eatery. The famous California cheesecake. Charbonnet's Wine on the River, famous for our great wine and our charcuterie. Jack's Steakhouse, famous for our cowboy ribeye. Modern Methods, famous for our craft beer. Cheers to Downtown Warren. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight. Anyone knows that we love to see people following dreams and then succeeding once they do. A few months ago, we had the fortunate experience of showing off Molinero Health and Functional Fitness, but wait till you see where they are now. Hard work pays off in all ways, always. Don't believe it? Michael Molinero and his team are living proof. This wouldn't be possible without all the people standing behind you, especially that man to the left. So without my dad in here, this is impossible. The work he put in, the hours he put in, I mean, the renovations that that man did by himself to make this possible is why I'm able to stand here today. Along with the girls at the desk, along with Mitch, and we already know how far Mitch has gotten me as a trainer, as a person, we grew together. I always told my kids, my son, my daughter, that if you help yourself, I will always help you. As long as I know you're helping yourself. And uh, I dedicated my whole retirement life, since I've been retired, working harder than I ever did, putting uh, the gyms together. The first one, we started on uh, Mercer Road, and now this one here. That statement about hard work takes on so many levels of truth when we look back on the year that the Molinero Health and Functional Training Team has had. In just a little over two years, even in the midst of a global pandemic, they have expanded from 1,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. Well, I mean, all it shows is hard work pays off. You know, I mean, if you just show up every day to work and you work hard until it's time to go home, Good stuff's bound to happen eventually, regardless of what's going on. So 2020, 2021, COVID-19, pandemic or not, it doesn't really matter, you know, as long as you keep working. Because the thing is, is what, I, what I tell everybody is, the reason why it's called a pandemic is because it sucks for everybody, not just us. So, you know, it's the way it works. And the reason they have put in that kind of work is so that their clients are able to grow in ways that fit their individual needs. We've had anybody from, you know, MS, we've had people with stroke, you know, half of this guy's body worked. We've had people with Parkinson's, we've had regular population, special population. So, you know, again, professional fighters, athletes of all types. Um, so we do offer training based off each and every individual person and their needs. So when it comes to that, you know, you get the specialized training, the individual, you know, specific training for that client. We offer the memberships. This place is more than a gym. It's more than a place that trains athletes. This is a place that feels like home. Everyone knows someone personally here. It's not just check in and leave. And on our website, you'll see that this is a place that people can't wait to get in and they never want to leave. And I mean that my friends, people we never met, people that are at the, the bar. I mean, it's very comfortable. It's a very welcoming atmosphere. And that was the plan because with all these other gyms, this is a training gym that offers memberships. A lot of other gyms are membership gyms that offer training. A special addition is the smoothie bar, which features recipes from Gino West of Prepped Wellness. He and Michael have been friends since college. So which smoothie is the best? 
I like the blueberry one, you know, and which is strange for me because I wouldn't typically be a blueberry guy, but it just, I don't know, the texture is good. It's got a, per it's not too strong, it's not too sweet, it's not too, it's a perfect little blend, you know, and it's got, you know, it's got the little, the little flax seed on top, makes it look a little cooler, so I don't know, that's one I like. The Molinero peanut butter special. Peanut butter, banana, chocolate. That's the best seller. We got a couple new ones coming, but that's my, that's my favorite one. All these smoothies, all these shakes, what's your favorite? Well, obviously the Molinero shake. <laughs> how, can I, how can it go different? <laughs> and this gym is personal for Michael and his father, Luca. They're no strangers to having to grow while facing difficult times. Just a few years ago, Michael lost his mother and Luca, his wife, to cancer. They both know that Denise is helping guide them along their way. I'm very proud of them. <laughs> and uh, I wish his mother was here to see him. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's okay. It's when, um, when they came to me and said, Dad, you know, I want to put a gym together. And um, I said, Sure, let's do it. Um, I'm an entrepreneur myself, been an entrepreneur my life. And um, even though he hasn't followed my footsteps in the business that I did, um, he became an entrepreneur himself. And sometimes it's the people that are no longer with us. I speak from personal experience on that one that drive us to uh, follow those dreams. And we just hope that they're looking down on us from a bigger, better place. So congratulations to the entire team out there. They're located right there in Newcastle. Just look them up online. They're easy to find. Mike, from one success story to another success story, this time about soap. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. This story is really interesting. Normally when you walk into a shop and you see a mother and a daughter working there, your first instinct is the mom's in charge and the daughter's just working. Not the case over in Hermitage. Let's take a visit over there and see what's going on. Every day, every day I come in here and because this is a storefront and something tangible that I can I can pick up a soap and be like and see my my packaging on it, see my business name, my my logo, my website, I look at it and I'm like, that's me. That's why this business is such a big part of me in my life. It's that's me right here. That's Jillian Hart O'Brien, one of the most accomplished high school kids you'll ever meet. And this is her shop in Hermitage, Maison de Savon, French for House of Soap. And that name is kind of an homage to our first store, which was an actual house in Warren, Ohio. Um, so that's where the name comes from, House of Soap. A few years ago, Jillian wanted to have a spa birthday party. Her mom, Gia, thought it was a great idea. So she buys all of the ingredients in bulk, and we ended up uh, making them in our basement. And we just made all of these products. And we never ended up even having the party. We gave them out to friends and family who said, wow, these are amazing products. You should." really do something with this and then that's where we started. Soon they outgrew their basement, then their facility in Warren, and now they're here in Hermitage working together. If you would have told me that I would be doing this 20 years ago, I, I probably really would have left. Give you a kafaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gia is a retired first sergeant from the U.S. Army, making up for lost time with Jillian when she was stationed overseas. I've been a uh, to 30 some countries and I served in Iraq and I've been to Kosovo and lots of places, Horn of Africa, many places. Have you ever been in harm's way? Yes, I have. Does that change your person? Absolutely. It uh, makes you more appreciative of what you have back home. Um, and if you're lucky to get out, then that's icing on the cake. Were you lucky? I was very lucky. Was it close? A little, sometimes. <laughs> So now, here they are together, running a store together, which for a lot of moms and daughters would be an impossibility. But for some reason, it works very well for them. Absolutely, sometimes I have to step back and let her lead, which is hard when you've been in the military for 25 years and you've been a leader. 
Um, but when I do take that step back and I see the things that she's doing and her growth, it's it's absolutely amazing to me. I, I always tell people the only person who could make me pee my pants laughing is my mom. Yeah. I, lo I love working with her. I always say it's her shop. <laughs> It's her shop, but it is our shop. You know, she's strong at sales and uh -huh. and she's she sells more than I do. She's better at sales than I am. And um, I'm better at the administrative stuff. So, you know, we, we make a great team. And this team has built quite the business with some really different, unique items. They even have a line for pets. Their all natural bug spray is a big hit. And don't forget the guys. You know, a lot of men will use shaving cream. We have an awesome shaving soap that is actually, well, we, we sell out almost every week. Just about anything you can think of. Shower steamers. So we have one called a sinus soother, which is one of our best selling products. So when you're stuffed up or you're not feeling well, you put it in your shower and it like, cleans you out like a mix. And if you haven't tried an all natural soap, they say it can really help. I'd say you're, you're missing out. Because? Because the natural ingredients are so much more nourishing for your skin. Uh, ever since I started this business, I have not gone back to like a bottle soap, bottle shampoo, bottle conditioner. I absolutely love the way that our ingredients make you feel. And that's what we try to do when we create these products is we take our time and care into what's going into them. Have you seen a response from people that, that Every has day. changed them? Every day. I think someone comes in here and says, I tried your products once and they come back because they want more. They want to try new things. They say my skin is improved. We have a lot of products who help people with eczema, rashes, skin irritation, you have sensitive skin, acne, all types of skin conditions. We have something for you here. And I think that's what really sets us apart from other businesses is that we really want to make sure that we include everyone. We have men's products, women's products, kids' products, mm -hmm. pet products, you name it, we have it for you. Ladies, I know Jillian's going to go off to college soon, but uh, Gia will be there to take take control and make sure everything runs just as smoothly. If you'd like to go to their website, Maison, M-A-I-S-O-N, De Savon, S-A-V-O-N, dot com, for all their lines of goods. Be back with more after this. Serving the Valley for over 28 years, Rachel's, the four-course feast is back. Enjoy an appetizer, house salad, entree, and dessert for just $19.95. Fine dining doesn't have to cost a fortune. Rachel's Restaurant in Austintown. And it really all started with salt, with Himalayan sea salt. That's where it all started because of a patient who came in and told me about the benefits of salt therapy, which is inhaling uh, Himalayan sea salt, an aerosolized Himalayan sea salt. And I found that my patients were having fantastic results using salt therapy. And I wanted to know how could I incorporate the Himalayan sea salt into products that would benefit the sinuses and the skin. And that's where Salt Me was born. We're here at the Grand Resort in Warren, Ohio today, which is the site for a big event coming up this weekend. We've all had a rough year, but there are some ladies and gentlemen out there that are really trying to help. Here you go. We are coming up one year to the day when the pandemic started, when everything shut down, and I think it's just perfect timing. Marianne Ritz has felt it and seen it with her clients. The pandemic can and has changed people, and she's looking to help. People are ready to get out. They're ready to get out. They need to get out. They need to learn and just start taking better care of themselves again. It's like starting all over. So she and some of her local business owners are putting together a wellness retreat at the Grand Resort on March 12th and 13th. It will have something for everyone, including Marianne's passion, yoga. So I decided to implement yoga into the retreat because when you're sitting, you're talking, you're not doing anything but listening all day, it's good to have some movement. So I thought the yoga would be appropriate. There will be speakers covering a multitude of topics from the body, to the mind, to your bank account. It all goes hand in hand. 
you know, if your finances aren't in order in any way, then you're, you're stressed out. And I'm gonna talk about how you need a plan. Just like anything in life, if you don't have a plan, you're not gonna know where the journey is going to take you. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna give women and men that come some easy steps so that they could get started. I think that's the most intimidating part if you feel like you don't have your finances in order is where to start. If you sign up and take part, you'll even see friends of Valley Spotlight. Our old friend Stephanie will talk about feng shui, and Amy from Gray Boutique will end things on day two with a fashion show. Everybody is. And the great thing about it, it's about pulling community together. These are all local businesses. They're physicians, they're local experts. They're people that, you know, want to get their, their business out there, get the word out of what they're doing and how they're trying to help everybody get their lives back in order. And we all need to do that in some aspect. We've just finished this. Um, really strenuous year where we maybe haven't been able to go out and do things. We're not seeing our friends like we like to. We're not going to concerts or on vacation. So I can come 20 minutes away to the most gorgeous facility. I'm spending the night. I have girlfriends that are coming. I'm just so excited to hear all the speakers. You looking forward to it? I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast. Well, Mike, it's all about feeling good, especially this time of year. And if you're looking for a property where you want to get away, where it feels like you're out in the country, but you're really not, Kelly Warren has a look at a Poland home that mixes old with new. Wait till you see this property. Well, this week on Home Advantage with Kelly Warren from Kelly Warren and Associates. Hi, Kel. Hi, Warren. We are mixing old with new. Like really old. Yes, really old. <laughs> it's a really old house, but you know what they say? Um, you can't, they don't make them like this anymore. Oh, no, they, they don't. They really don't. Yeah. And we are in a beautiful property out here in Poland, Ohio. What year was this born? So this was built in 1820. And what I love about this house is they kept a lot of that original integrity, lots of the charm and characteristics of that 1800s house. And then they did things like update this beautiful kitchen oh, and the bathroom. Oh, so nice. I was looking at this. So even the new granite on top with the older, you know, antique looking base, I think it's so cool that they just blended these pieces together. There are so many different elements to this home that like are sort of conversation pieces mm -hmm. and it, what I what I notice is you know they've got like the old you know um, like refrigerator and the yes. ice box with the cool handles, but the openness of the way that we live our lives currently is still part of this. Yes, yeah, it's really a great floor plan. When you guys are taking a look at, I mean, I have to say I think this is is this the oldest property that we've ever had on the show yet? On the show, yes. Okay, I was gonna say how about ever for you? No, you're like not, hold on. Not oldest for me. No. The oldest on the show. When you guys see that, like there's gotta be a ton of questions for people because they don't know how things were constructed back then, like yeah. what are the kinds of resources or maintenance or things like that that yeah. people are asking you. You know, actually people like that custom solid construction mm -hmm. from that era. If you think about it, how people want now, um, you know, Amish built and things like that, right. it's a similar type of integrity to the building. So it, it is a, a very um, solid product. You know, it's not, you don't have the plywood stuff that we have today. <laughs> no, 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 you don't hear a thing outside. And this is a beautiful piece of property. You got a pond out here, you're in the middle of Poland, great schools, great community, and yet you still feel like you're sort of away from it all, yes. which is very, very cool. Yeah, we're on two and a half acres. So, you know, I mean, I can only imagine what the area was like in 1820. This was probably the house with all the land, you know, and then they started developing around it. It's still a pretty cool house. Mm -hmm. um, for people that are, I mean, I just asked her off camera for a second ago, like how many listings you guys have currently out there, right. which is a different number than this time last year. Yeah, it's down significantly because we're in a seller's market right now. Homes are flying off the shelf. They're not lasting as long as they did. Buyers are having to offer a little bit more, 
But, um, sorry, my mask keeps falling. <laughs> Buyers are having to offer more uh, because we're in that seller's market and supply and demand, right. you know. But interest rates are so low too that over the course of your loan, you're making out even if you're paying higher for a home. Yeah, so, if you're gonna have to inch a few thousand beyond what they're yeah. even asking over. Yeah, it's still really good for both buyers and sellers right now. It's really an interesting market. Well, I think this one is fantastic. I think Fred and I are both big fans of this. So if you want to see this home or any of the ones that are listed currently, please don't hesitate to call them or text. The number as always is 330-717-2689. And you can search for this home, 3905 Dobbins, on our website, kellysoldit.com. Kelly sold it. She sells everything. <laughs> she just sells it. Thanks, Kel. Thank you. I have to admit, Fred and I were pretty impressed with that property. Kelly, it just keeps on going, and that's just our first look at that, so thank you so much. Well, in this year, unprecedented times for all kinds of businesses, including our friends in the restaurant industry. Mike, you catch up with one of our favorites, Otavio at Station Square, where March is a big month for them, right? March is a big month for me. I love March Madness and I love St. Patrick's Day, but it's an even bigger month at Station Square. So we sat down with Otavio in our perfectly plated segment to find out what's going on this month and why it's so special. Perfectly plated. We are at Station Square with Otavio celebrating a big anniversary this month. 35 years Station Square has been around. Yep. How great is that? How, how proud are you that this uh, restaurants don't usually go on that long, do they? Exactly. You know, we are fortunate, we're lucky, uh, and you know, a lot of hard work and a lot of great support for the local uh, community. Uh, a lot of loyal, good, great customers. It's not just customer now, it's a friends, part of the family. And staff. And the staff. We got a lot of staff that have been here for that long. Yeah, it's been it's been a good ride, that's for sure. What about for you? You haven't owned it all 35 years, right? Not 35 years. I bought the restaurant uh, uh, May 14, 2001. So for me, it's going to be May 14, uh, 2021. It's going to be 20 years. 20 years here. 20 years. I was 27. Do you, remember, do you remember that first week in business? Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, it was challenging because... You know, like I said, I was only 27. Uh, a lot of the people that don't know me, and uh, uh, you know, I was a chef in Italy, and uh, it was a lot of challenge. People don't believe in me, right. or you know, um, you have to prove yourself. You got to prove myself, and they say, "Oh, you got to fill big shoes." You know, my English you know, was the best. Still, not the best. But, Still you know, great. That was great. You know, <laughs> but um, you know, it was only. A couple of years I was in this country, uh, I came in the country in 99 from Italy, and uh, you know, it was challenging, but time go along, we did a great accomplishment. You know, we got one of the biggest menu in the area, with a lot of fresh products, fresh seafood, one of the award-winning best wine lists in Ohio, over 450 wine. Uh, we partner with the best company uh, in the restaurant industry, like Stan Light. Steel Light, yeah. Uh, you know, we got all the china, silverware, glassware. The glass, the wine glass is my favorite with the old logo. And the owner of the company, John Miles, is my good friend. Great guy, great guy. Uh, so we try to use the best company in the industry. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of catering, upside, primus. Um, we're you know, we're we doing do, it, we're doing it. Out. You have a couple of specials for March. Yeah. This we, is our anniversary month. We want to promote our 35 year anniversary. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with every check, everybody spent $35 and above, uh, you get a jar of the uh, or famous marinara sauce uh, for free. There you go. You know, promote a big thank, thank you, uh, or thank you, the or support for all this year and uh, the customer. Thank you. Okay. What else? You got a wine special too, uh, right? We got uh, three amazing wine, uh, a Chardonnay, a Zifado, and a blend usually $70 value for $35. Unbelievable wine. And we're gonna have a uh, $35 wine test. Uh, it's gonna be five unbelievable uh, Italian wine with a pairing with a one great dish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
for only $35 for the 35 year anniversary. Most times wine tastes are almost $100. Exactly, maybe more this one. The yeah. last wine it worth it, it cost, uh, it's about $80 wine. Um, you know, we want to enjoy that anniversary. And give a little back, right? And give a little back. What day is the wine taste? The, the wine taste is in March 25th, okay. 6.30, and we're going to have a live music. Uh, is the house band coming? Didn't you tell me the house the band house was coming? The house band, we got a, you know, a comment, we got to figure out the date, okay. but we're working it in, uh, you know, every Thursday we got live music, um, every Wednesday we got Wine Wednesday, uh, five different wine special, um, and uh, every Tuesday we got 20% uh, off every wine in the wine list, you know, from that's fantastic. Bottom. You can't beat it. All right, so listen, Martha's the Munch to celebrate 35 years. As they celebrate this 35-year anniversary, you can celebrate too. Get out here to Station Square and enjoy it. Thank you. Salt Me is a company that produces products that are made out of Himalayan sea salt. I have a love affair with Himalayan sea salt. And as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, the most important thing for me is that the products are gonna be effective and that they're gonna be safe for patients. So I make products that help sinus conditions and I make products that are going to be good for the skin and good for the body. And all of them are made of Himalayan sea salt. Papa Canzanetta's Peppers, recipe established in 1975. A family secret is now yours to share with the people who add spice to your life. Choose from mild and hot versions, plus our famous original blend too. They're the perfect punch for any dish, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We've got the recipes to prove it. Just follow us on Facebook, order online at papacans.com and pick your peck. Papacans.com, order six jars or more and qualify for free shipping. We like it hot, we're glad you do too. Well, sometimes on these spring winter days, it's still nice to have a great pot of soup to warm up the entire house. Mitch and Helga have quite a soup for us, lentil soup. And I have to say, I haven't had this in a very long time, so I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna have some fun. Very good. And, and so, what are you making today? Yes, okay, today, you know, a lot of people ask me when I say I make lentil soup, they say, What's, what are you doing with lentils? So I'm gonna show them today how you make a nice lentil soup. So I'm gonna have you cut the, we have two stalks of uh, trust celery. Me yes, I trust yes. you with How that, big yeah. do you want them? About this size? No, no. Let me, let me show you. Like that. How's that? All right, perfect. Yeah. See, you know, and the I'm onion you want always petite when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no chunks of onion. Get in trouble for that. I know now. the onion's going to be next. That is your favorite. I always have them do the onions. And then we do a couple of uh, carrots. Now, oh, I, I only make a half a bag. See, they come like this. In a bag, it's a whole pound. And that makes like a big pot full. But we're only going to do... A half a pack today, okay? A story as a child where you had to oh, pick yes. the stones out. Yes. Is it like my that mom with these? every have to look? Yeah, every Saturday, my mom made soup, potato soup, lentil soup, uh, whatever soup, you know, bean soup. And when it came to lentils, I go, oh my God, no, because I had to go sew it each one. I had to put it on the kitchen table and then go like this. Trying yeah. to find the stones in it. Yeah, there were now, stones I don't know in why. there. I don't know whether they dry it because with my coffee production, I find stones in when Do I roast. You? And I have to pick them out because you don't want to grind the stone. Yeah. You know what? I tried to go have Mason, my grandson, to look on the computer. I wanted to see how do you grow lentils. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm sorry, but I like to eat them, but uh, I don't know how to grow them. Maybe I'm that's something sure. we should uh, follow up with. We'll, uh, we'll look into some of the products that we cook with and yes. see how they grow. And uh, you know what, can you reach me the olive oil please? I did, gotcha. yeah. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive, olive oil in here. Okay, now we're gonna go just one turn around in the pot. We don't want too much olive oil because we're gonna take stock to cook the lentils Looks in, like okay? like a couple of tablespoons. And you know, then I need, um, let's see, just need a little butter? bit of butter, yeah. I like to have just a little butter because, uh, you know, butter is good for everything, but can you cut that? I don't have a knife. 
Yeah, we have a poor kitchen. There's only one knife. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was I've funny. got one over here, but I'm using yours. It's nice and That's, sharp. Yes, it is. Okay, now we're going to get the butter, and then we're going to put all those veggies in here. Okay. That's terrible. Now we start uh, season four, and I still order you around. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I'm used to it. It's been a while, but you know, I guess I kind of missed it. Yeah. Nice to be told what to do once in a while. Okay. I think most husbands learn that early yeah. on, or they get kicked out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and did, did you know? I mean, well, you, you're the chef. I'm just a yeah, home cook. But when you use, when you do like onions or vegetables like this, I always like to use a little bit of salt. It brings up the sweetness of your veggies. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, the caramelization brings it, you know, okay, it, that's it gets the sugar to the surface. Okay. You know, like the Brussels sprouts we used oh, to roast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So much different when you roast them than boil. Okay, now this has to go just kind of get like translucent a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. Uh, See how that looks? Right, you are. Uh, You're getting translucent. Nice? The onions are starting to be see through here. Yes, okay. And I'm going to put our lentils in. And it's like I told you, half a pack. It's got all the stones out of there, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good for dental I mean, work. you know what? I rinse this. Just rinse it over the sink, over the the deposit okay I always rinse my lentils and and now you can go and uh, put our stock in you want this whole yeah mm -hmm. uh, awesome. okay now you have a little half, more chicken yeah yeah put a little bit like half of, half of the carton sorry about half and then you know then check on it because you know how those lentils they get real they absorb it all absorb it all yeah. yeah and now if you use water you can use water of course you're gonna go and have my muggy you can get this in the store don't you know you this. love that. I know you. You just go put. And a, you have bay leaves. Here. And we have to put a bay leaf in. And I always get my bay leaf in bulk. That's why they're in a mason jar. One, two. Mm. Yeah. And I put a little bit of pepper in. Okay. A little pepper. And it needs a little bit more salt. How long and is this? And later, go for? Uh, this is going to be an hour and a half. Okay. okay. The two hours. And uh, we're going to go bring it back. We're gonna put some goodies in there. Oh yeah, kolbasi. Oh, mm -hmm. for the smoke. Yeah. Yes, and right. some potato. Okay. Cube so potatoes. you're gonna have me cube these potatoes, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And now this is gonna be cooking for about an hour and a half. Okay, now, now listen. Oh, that smells look wonderful. At, yeah, look at it. Isn't mm. doesn't it look good? Like, see, then it's nice and thick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna peel the potatoes. All right. Okay. And we want them cut about the same cut size little, as the vegetable? Like little, uh, you call them little cubes like, you know? You know, like dice? Yep. Okay. Like a medium dice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm cutting up the kobasi. And see, I make like little half moons, you know? Perfect. That yeah. you get with every bite, you're going to get a little saucy. Now, when I, when I make, when you make that whole pound, you take the whole ring, you know? Yeah. But I just use the half a ring. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to overdo easier, it right? with the meat, you know? Oh. Because... I put a, my potato. I put a little bit of surprise in there. This is like a German Frankfurter. Oh, nice. Delicious. From the German kitchen. Yeah, from the German Deutsche Küche. Deutsche Küche. Very good. You can say that good. <laughs> One of these days, maybe you'll take me back home, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't joke about it. I might do that. Yeah, I would uh -huh. love to go to Germany. My, yeah. uh, my family went there this past year. Very nice. Well, I tell you, I brought all kinds of good recipes back for for our home plate kitchen. Yeah, I was in Germany in October. Oh, give me the size here, about like this. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And then they cook faster, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna have. So you brought some new recipes for us, huh? Yes, I did. That's exciting. Okay. So before Oktoberfest this year, we're gonna have a lot of new recipes for the German crowd. Yes, yes. You know, I listened to you on the radio on Saturday. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. And my, you know, my daughter Rita, she's on it too. She does a good job. Yeah, it's fun to hear you and Wolfgang. You know, we're doing this for 32 years. Really? Really. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, and okay. for, for the German crowd in Youngstown, that's very special, I imagine. Yeah. Okay, now this is going to be cooking. Uh, you know, I, I put Yukon gold in it because that keeps it nice. Now look at this. This is almost like a stew. Now these okay? potatoes will thicken it a little more yeah. as well, mm -hmm. right? Now if you want to make, you know, like my mom, she almost made a roux and put it in. Okay. Okay, to make it thicker. Yeah. But you know, with the flour and well, stuff, the I just... Lentils have starch. They, yeah, and so I said starch enough in there, we, we just keep it like that. Yeah. Okay, now this is going to be uh, 
Mm, that but does smell good. I can't wait. 10 minutes, 15 that. minutes, and it's done. Then before we serve it, we just throw this in for five minutes. You go back to your line. Oh, you got your marks? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> There we go, now it's... Mm, it smells good. Yes, yeah, so now we put just a little bit of vinegar in there, okay? Uh, a just couple a little, tablespoons? Yeah, yeah, well, it all depends how you taste. My mom always put a little container of vinegar on the table for if you want to add a little bit in your plate. At first, I thought you brought moonshine. Oh, did I? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna put the little weenies in there. And just to warm them up in there? Yeah, just, you know, they're fully cooked and they come from the Deutsche Küche. So, so that you would have one per meal, even though you have the cup? Yeah, 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 you just put that in the plate. That looks so pretty, you know? Yeah, and uh, just because they're fully cooked, okay? And so, uh, now can you take smell? Yeah, and that sharpness of the vinegar. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm. And we're gonna go have a taste in just a couple of minutes, just to have the, for the meat to go get... Okay, to blend together. Blend together, yes, okay. There we go. Now it's been cooking for a little while. Yes. They're all plump. Mmm, nice. doesn't that look good? And you know what? I'm gonna go serve you a bowl now. Now this is, uh, oh, look at that. St. Stephen's, we have everything local. Very nice. Okay. Now this is just gonna be like I do that in Germany. Oh, that it, like so my good. mom used to do it, okay? We're gonna serve some of this up like Family that. Family style, we're gonna share. And then we're gonna go and take this little weenie okay. and set it right on top. Now doesn't that look wonderful? Now you told me the tradition is they, they cut it they at the table. They cut it in at the table, yeah, so if, if you I want to. Into little just pieces a like little that. Taste for us, you know, yeah. Okay. There you go. And you can butter a piece of bread and then you have a dinner. And, and we have some local bread here too. I see we yes. have the Warren Baking Company. Well, and we've cut it with a Schwabel's knife. We're sharing the wealth out here. <laughs> this is great. And a nice piece of German bread. All right. There's a spoon for you. There you go. That makes a nice, nice dinner. Don't be so stingy with the butter. You want a little more yeah. butter? <laughs> There you go. You know, I put on some weight, there. you know, I, I can't go you too much cut, butter. Yeah, cut it right there. I don't want to eat the big piece of bread. Okay, but you know what? I'm just very anxious for you to go taste the, uh, the soup. Let me get some of those lentils, a yes. little bit of that there. Make sure you blow on it. Hot, 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 hot. Mmm. 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 Isn't that delicious? Oops. Hot. That is great. And then we're going to have a little piece of bread. I know, I don't know. From there to we're dinner. Gonna double dip here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to say goodbye. How oh, do we? Yes, we do. Then we're going to eat some more, okay? Well, I'm Mitch. And this is Helga saying, Auf Wiedersehen. Thanks for joining us on Home Plate Home Stop. Lentil soup. Uh, when I was a kid, we'd go to the Brown Derby. They had a salad buffet and they always had lentil soup on it and I absolutely loved it. Nice job, Helga. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching this week on Valley Spotlight. Don't forget the wellness retreat is this weekend at the Grand Resort. Make sure you check that out. And uh, until then, let's send it back to Lauren to kind of wrap things up. Well, Michael, eventually we'll be back together, that's for sure. In the meantime, we want everybody to stay safe. And of course, we're just looking forward to our next show. So thank you for all the different ways that you watch us, YouTube, ValleySpotlight.com, Facebook, all of those things, they're all there for you. And I don't know about you, but I have never met a milkshake that I don't like. And that includes the McDonald's Shamrock Shake. So that is our retro commercial this year, this, this episode. I wish they were available all year, I'll be honest. I come celebrate. McDonald's is serving up the one and only Shamrock Shake. They're tasty, cool, and delicious. But hurry, they won't be around for long, and that's no blarney. It makes kids glad and it thrills mom and dad. It's the most fun by Boston's Erin Go Brock together. McDonald's and you. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.